everybody, this is Ms. Smith. So today what we're gonna do is we are going to write um, formula names or the, the names of compounds using the ions. So we're gonna take the ions, put them together, write the formula and the name. But where we're starting at, starting from the ions themselves, um, is a crucial step to be able to understand basically how it goes together, if you need to use a Roman numeral or not, which Roman numeral to use, just all of those things. Now, this here, we have been using this the past couple of days. You need to use this. So if you haven't been using this up until now or you have lost this, please send me an email. You need this, okay? If you haven't highlighted them, please highlight them. If you have forgotten how to highlight them and didn't do that the first time when I asked you to do that, please go back to Monday's video. Um, that was on October 26th. Um, and it'll tell you how to highlight them. This periodic table will be available to you for every single exam. Every single quiz that we do, every single exam. I normally don't do this, okay? Normally I give you a fresh periodic table with no notes on it, just the basic symbols and all of that every single time we do a test. So this I'm letting you use, okay? You can write notes on it, you can color things in, whatever you want to do, I don't care. But you need this. Don't shoot yourself in the foot because you're not gonna use this. Use it, okay? You need it. Now remember, on the back back here, we have this list of polyatomic um, ions. This list is important. Do not forget that this list is here. Um, here in a minute, when I start going into some difficult things, everybody forgets that this list exists and they start making things really, really hard on themselves. Don't do that, okay? Do not try to recreate the wheel. Look at this list, okay? That's what this is for. Most of the time when we do, um, when we're writing something, the first element of the compound will be on the front side. And then the rest of it, if it's gotten more than one capital letter, is gonna be back here, okay? These are multiple capital letters, okay? These are polyatomic ions when you put several capital letters together. So for the most part, you'll have one element from up here and then back here. Now, sometimes, like sodium and chloride, those are elements over here. So sodium is here, chloride is here. I mean, that can happen. But if you see a whole bunch of capital letters, like three or four or five of them, it's probably something from this side and something from this side, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get our notes out. Writing names from ions. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few examples, and then you're going to work some practice. We'll do a couple. I'm going to work some. You will work some, and then check yourself with what I do, and then you will go work on practice problems like normal, and then you'll take the quiz. All right. So let's say that you were given this. Oh, excuse me. Ni plus 2 and S minus 2. So on this particular problem, what it's wanting is for you to put it together and then name it. So if we put this together, this is a plus two, this is a minus two. If we remember from a few days ago when you have a plus two and a minus two, they cancel. They basically just reduce out to ones and you don't write ones. And then the plus and minuses disappear when you put things together anyway. So the formula for this is N-I-S and that's it. Now the name of this is not necessarily that easy. Okay, so when you name this, you have to look at a few things. You need to look at this. You need to see if Ni plus 2 is highlighted. Ni plus 2 is highlighted, so yes. So uh, I've got nickel plus 2 or nickel plus 3. I use nickel plus 2, so that means it's going to be nickel 2. Now normally, this would, this right here is nickel 2 ion, okay? But we're putting things together now. So I'm making a compound, so it's nickel 2 something. So S by itself, being negative, is on the front side of the periodic table, it's not on that list on the back. And that is already renamed, and it's named sulfide. So nickel 2 sulfide. 
Okay, so here are the instructions on how to write a name. So here are the steps. Step one, find the name of the first term. Find the name of the first term, which is what we did. Okay, we found the name of the first term. That was it right there. That was the first term. Okay, and then you write it down. Okay, we did that. Step two. Oh, there is a extra little bullet point under here. Check to see if Roman numerals are needed. All right, check to see if Roman numerals are needed. So how you know that if you need Roman numerals they will be highlighted on your periodic table. If it's highlighted, you need a Roman numeral. Okay, step two. Find the name of the second term. And write it down. Okay, now, <clears throat> Pretty simple, okay? It's really not that difficult. The hard part that everybody gives up on so easily is this part here, finding the name of that term. That's where everybody gives up a little bit too easy. They can't find it, so I'll just make something up. No, it's there. You need to match it 100%. The charges even need to be exactly the same, okay? Because if you had, the reason why I said you even need to check the charges because if you have something like this, ClO minus, ClO2 minus, so this is, they all have the same charge, but they have different number of oxygens. Okay, but you could have something with different number of charges, like I was saying, and hold on, let me make sure that I have the, so there's one that's manganate and permanganate. Okay, so then I always get a flip-flop, which one's which. So MnO4, both of them are NmnO4, but they have a difference in charges. Minus one is permanganate, and minus two is manganate. So you even have to check to make sure the charges are exactly the same. Okay, so a different number of oxygens can change the name of it. A different charge can change the name of it. So you need to match it exactly. Okay, now, a little later this week, you will be given a full-on formula and asked to find the name. We are writing formulas from ion, so it's a little bit easier because these have already been broken apart and you already know what the charges are. When you start from a compound, like a formula that's been already put together from that formula, you may not necessarily know the charges, but you have to find them, okay? So I will teach you how to do that on a different day. All right, so let's do a couple more examples of this. Um, let me get an example here. Okay, here's a good one. Ca plus two and Br minus. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put it together before, when we put this one together, they cancel each other out, okay? Because they were equal but opposites. This time, they are not equal to opposite. They cannot be reduced. So they're just gonna cross and go down. Okay, so that formula is gonna be CABR2. Now, I don't write anything here because it's a one technically. Remember, your plus and minus symbols go away anytime you put a compound together, you put ions together to make a compound, the plus and minus symbols disappear. Don't ever write a formula for a compound with a plus or minus in it. Okay, there's only one exception for that and you're not gonna be asked to do that, okay? So, 
if you have, if you put a compound together and you still have a plus or minus somewhere in there, then you're incorrect. You need to take it out. Okay, now the numbers stay. Now sometimes they'll reduce, just like this one did. It had a plus two and a minus two. They technically reduce by one to one, so you don't write ones. Um, technically this is a one here, you don't write ones. So the number's still there, but it's implied. Okay, now let's name this thing. So step one was to find the name of the first term. So here is my first term. So I'm gonna go to my periodic table. Now I said normally the first term is on the front side of the periodic table. That's, that's pretty normal. There's only one or two cases where the first term is actually on the back and it's like NH4 and H3O plus, I believe, are the only two positive ions. But the reason why I say it always, you know, most of the time it comes from the front side of the periodic table is because the first term are always positive no matter what, okay? And that list on the back side of your periodic table are negatives. They're negative charge. So you've only got like one or two positive charges on that table on the back. And so that's those different circumstances that I'm talking about. So this is going to come from the front side of the periodic table. And I do see one that says Ca2+, and that is just named calcium. Now I don't have to put ion because I'm putting it together. Now on the second, or a little side note for number one, check to see if it needs Roman numerals. Is calcium two plus highlighted? No, it is not. That is number 20 on the periodic table. It is not highlighted, so no Roman numerals. Okay, so now I did that. I went through step one. Let's do step two. Find the name of the second term. Now, here's a trick. This is one uppercase and one lowercase. That means it is a single element. That's going to be on the front side of your periodic table. If this was like something like B, capital B, capital O, capital H, or something like that, those are three different elements, which means that it's polyatomic, and it's on that list on the back. Because remember, that list on the back of your peri periodic table is polyatomic ions. The front of your periodic table on the actual periodic table are all monatomic. So this is monatomic because there's only one capital letter there. So that's going to be on the front side of your periodic table. And if I go find Br minus, it has already been renamed its um, negative ion name. And it's just bromide, calcium bromide. And that's it. Okay, I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to have you pause. And I will have you do two on your own. So I'll do one more with you. So CO, pay attention that that is a little O, not a capital O, NO2 minus. Now, this O here is capitalized, so that's oxygen. This N is capitalized, that's nitrogen. This is polyatomic, okay? So already we know this is on the back side of the periodic table. This is a capital C and a lowercase O. That is one element, it's from the front side of your periodic table. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's put this together. These do not reduce, they are not factors of each other, so that means we're gonna cross and go down. When we cross and go down, the plus and minus symbols disappear, and we only leave the numbers behind. So if we put this down here, that's a one, so we don't write it. We don't write the, sim the, the one. We do go ahead and write the symbol, though. So CO, and then we're gonna take this two here, and bring that down here. Now, I already have a two down at the bottom, so I need to put parentheses around it like this. Okay, remember the rule for parentheses. If I have a polyatomic ion and the charge going on it is greater than one, you need parentheses. All right, and so that's it for the formula. All right, let's name this thing. So find the name of the first one. So CO plus two. So I'm looking for a capital C, little o. Okay, I see that. That is cobalt. Now it is highlighted. So that means that I need a Roman numeral. Now this says plus two. So I need, I need a Roman numeral two. If it was plus three, because it's the other option for cobalt, it would be a Roman numeral three. But since the two was used in this, that's how I need to say that. Now NO2, that's polyatomic. So I'm gonna go to the back side of my periodic table. NO2 minus is called nitrite. OK, 
Okay, you've got to be careful with that because NO3 minus is nitrate and NO2 minus is nitrite. So be careful with that. There's one letter difference. And when, like in the lab, if you were dealing with these two different chemicals, they are completely different chemicals. One, no, just completely different, okay? Even though it's one letter difference, because you can have calcium nitrate or calcium nitrite, very, very different compounds, okay? Even though it's one letter difference. Okay, so now I want to give you two more that I want you to work on, and then we're done for today. Okay, so let me go ahead and write down two more. I'm going to do K plus CRO4 minus 2 and FE plus 3O minus 2. So go ahead and stop this video, and I want you to try these out. So remember, you need to write the formula and write the name, the formula and the name. Okay, the formula and the name for both of these. All right, go ahead and stop this video now. All right, so let's check these things. So step number one is we need to put this thing together. So these do not cancel, so we're just gonna cross and go down. So the symbols, remember the symbols disappear. The plus and minus symbols disappear. So I'm left with K2CRO4. And that's it for that one. Okay, to name it, this is monatomic. Okay, 99% of the time it's going to be on the front side of your periodic table. Your first term is on the front side of your periodic table. K plus is known as potassium. All right, CRO4. I have several capital letters in there, so that means that that is polyatomic. So I'm going to go to my list. That was CRO4 2 minus. Make sure you check the symbol. I mean, the not the symbol, the charge. CRO4 2 minus. There's a CR207 2 minus. That's not it. CRO4 2 minus. That is called chromate. Now, let's check to see if we need a Roman numerals. Um, to check if you need Roman numerals, potassium would be highlighted. Potassium, I flipped my periodic table over. Potassium is not highlighted, so no Roman numeral on that one. We are finished. Okay, this one here. These two symbols do not simplify. Excuse me, these two charges do not simplify. So that means that they're just going to stay, and we are going to cross and go down. So that's the plus and minus symbols disappear, so we are left with... Fe2O3 because we crossed and went down. Now the only thing left to do now is to name this thing. So this is Fe. So let's find Fe. Now Fe is highlighted, so that means we need a Roman numeral. So that's Fe plus 3. So this is going to be iron 3. Had that been Fe2 plus, then it would have been iron 2, but this is Fe3 plus, so this is iron 3. This one here, that is one element. So that's going to be on the front side of my periodic table. That's only one capital letter. Had I had multiple capital letters like this one did, that would be polyatomic. But this is monatomic because there's only one capital letter. So that means it's on the front side of the periodic table. So I go find O2 minus, and that is oxide. And that's it. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. You know where to find me.